welcome to the bar because we're always raising it and this month we are talking to women in sport because they are always raising the bar hello and welcome to another episode of the bar where we are speaking to women because they are always raising it and i'm so excited and honored to be talking to this week's guest it's none other than two-time gold medalist at the commonwealth games i'm talking about the swimmer Laura van Niekerk. She's young, she's brilliant. And to say that she's raising the bar is an understatement. So let me just bring her into this. Hello, Laura. Thank you so much Hello. for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's an honor being on here. And it's been a roller coaster ride for you. Firstly, congratulations on everything that you've achieved this year alone. What a year it has been. How many medals has it been this year? Because you were swimming at uh, Mare Nostrum. You were also swimming at the World Championships. You were swimming just last week in Peter Maritzburg. <laughs> and of course, at the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, it's it's been a crazy year, actually. Like, I've been all over the place. I feel like I've been in each country. Not not really, but... Um, so, I've, like you said, I went to the Mare Nostrum to three different countries. You basically have every three days you race for two days so you have like a day off in between or maybe two days just to travel to the next um country and then i stayed over for two weeks in turkey and just went on training there and then i had world champs in budapest so it was a really like long time away from home it was six weeks in total that i was overseas um and then just coming back here training and then going straight to um, Commonwealth Games so it's been very busy but I've had one of the best years of my life so um, I mean I'm enjoying the ride. <laughs> yes I mean you, you you say you went to the Commonwealth Games but then you came back and you were busy immediately. You were swimming is yeah. it the short course championships you were doing now in Peter Maritzburg? Yes yeah, so I went to do the short course champs just so I can go go qualify there for world short course champs in December and that will be in Australia. So I just had to go there and qualify. Um, yeah, so it wasn't a very, like, a lot of pressure. It was just having fun, um, swimming the times I had to, and, yeah, just enjoying it. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. I mean, everything that you've been doing so far. But also, you've just had surgery. And we need to talk about this because you've had this, I think I, I read somewhere, it's always been something that has been an issue for you. So tell us a bit about that, what the surgery was on, what the issue was. And I mean, you swam with this at the Commonwealth Games and still achieved. Yeah, so I've, I've had a foot injury. Not It's not really an injury. Um, so I was born with an extra piece of bone. You call it Ostrigonum syndrome, where that extra piece of bone um, gets stuck in between the two joints that make your foot move. So I've been struggling with pain for six years, but I've always had the bone. You get born with it. So we finally, after going to doctor number six, um, figured out what the problem was. And so I had surgery to quickly get it removed. It's not, it's not really a big um, surgery. It's only three weeks in a cost. So like I said, like they actually take something extra from you. So it's the recovery process isn't that long because uh, I don't need that extra piece of bone. But other than that, I'm just happy it's out and it's never going to hurt me again because <laughs> um, I was always restricted doing explosive training like jumps and running or cycling because of that impact. Um, so I think now that I'm going to have to be able, like I'm going to be able to do explosive training, I, I can do like go cycle if I want to. So it's going to be better because I'm going to have so much more things I can do without having pain in my foot. So I'm excited about that. Look, it's scary to even think about what you would be capable of now, now that you've had this surgery, now that you can do more explosive training, because from where I'm sitting, I'm like, wow, you are so incredible. In fact, I get goosebumps just watching you. And to be fair, you know, people in South Africa, as a community as a whole, don't really follow swimming that closely, the, the swimming championships. But to be on this, the world stage, like the Commonwealth Games, and eventually the Olympics, because that is definitely a goal, mm -hmm. and we want to see you yeah. there. 
this that must be something so special did did you imagine that it would come so soon people knowing who you are everybody knows who you are right now there are articles being written about you i'm sure you've done countless interviews and not just this one did yeah. you imagine that it would happen like right now at the age of 19 i uh, no i haven't actually i thought only after 2024 because that's always been the goal to go to the olympics and then only like make a statement there um but like you said it's been crazy actually after all this um interviews and i would just um walk in a place and someone would notice me and i'm like i've never met the person but it's so amazing that um the country got together and all, everyone cheered for us and supported us at the commonwealth games and um i think the whole it brings south africa together the sport and just it's amazing that everyone just supported us um we've got a really big support structure and i really i really love that about the the sport and look what you're saying is absolutely right sport in general brings people together brings the country together and we have somebody to cheer behind and one of those moments was this and i want to be playing it and hopefully it plays then we can watch it um it's a silent video so that we can talk over <laughs> it this was your 100 meter i mean you were just going i mean <laughs> you were there What was that thought when you looked behind you and you were you wondering wh- where is everyone? Um I actually because I thought I knew it's going to be a race between me and Tatiana. Um even though we we get along so well when as soon as you get in the pool you are competitors it's just the way of the sports. So I knew I thought she's going to come back at me because she's got that 200 endurance. <laughs> um i always turn f- first on yes. the 50 and then the second 50 she always tr- um gets closer to me so i i just in that race i was like just go just go i heard the crowd going crazy <laughs> um and i couldn't see her so i was like either th- either she's on the other side of the lane rope and i just can't see her in my side view or she's behind me so i was just like just give it your all and just sprint to the end um so yeah i was just when i touched that wall and i I saw that um I got first place I was amazed but then looking at the time board and I saw the time I went I was <laughs> even more out of this world because I mean the time is what's going to get me to the Olympics one day. Yes exactly I mean and this was the Olympic gold medalist that you were beating and yeah. it, it was so special also to see how happy she was at your achievements the two of you have such a beautiful relationship do you train together? No, we don't train together. We are different coaches, but she's also here in Pretoria and I mean um we've always raced against against each other and I think um her being happy after the race and me being happy it's just we know what the work is you put into it and we know the hours and the blood, sweat and tears. So um I was just amazing that um she celebrated it with me. I mean it's if it was the other way around I would have celebrated it with her because it's just such an amazing thing. Yeah, it was so beautiful to see the tears, the elation, the hugs, the posing. I mean, I watched every second of it. I was completely in awe. I was like, "Wow, this is so incredible." Yes, Laura van Nikek, somebody who we haven't heard of before. Mm. And here she is claiming the gold medals. She's breaking records over and over and over again. It's something so special to see and experience and I I felt like I was a part of it just being able to watch that. it was absolutely yeah. incredible so your family must obviously be over the moon so happy they probably have recordings of this <laughs> they do yeah same um we have a family group and with like oh, the whole family the cousins the aunts the uncles and um after each race they would send a video to me that would that someone would have videoed on the tv so i could watch back on the race um so it was very special i could hear the people cheering in the background the family members so just having that support structure is so important actually it's um just amazing having all those people behind me and believing in me all the way i mean it's been 11 years since i started swimming and they still supporting me so it's just amazing having them by my side so you've been with your coach for 11 years and that's also when you started swimming what what was it that made you start swimming and also what did what was it that he saw in you so you just started swimming did you just learn how to swim at that age 
or was that when or were you always swimming but then you decided as a young eight years old you must have been as a young eight year old you were like okay actually I want to swim competitively and I don't even know how you make that decision at eight years old so I I started swimming early in my life just for water safety Um, as soon as we got the water safety under the belt we kind of stopped again Um, because we have a pool at our house so my dad was always say to my mom if we are in trouble we need to be able to swim ourselves out of trouble so we got water safety lessons um, early on in our lives but then I started swimming at eight years, years old again just because my brother my sister started swimming and I used to go to my mom they used to train at a virgin active and I would sit in the juice bar and just um, watch them training and I mean I've always loved the water even because we, we have we've, we grew up with a pool so um, in the summer we would be in the pool like permanently just swimming in the pool and playing so having them going and having fun and training I was so jealous of them so I um, at a stage got confidence to go up to the coach my coach now and just ask him like when is he going to tell my mom I should start swimming because I went with her every single time they swam and watched them, but I didn't swim. So I think by then he realized maybe, well, this kid really wants to swim. And I mean, if you want to do something, it's possible. So, and ever since then, I just, I've loved it. And I just, I think I'll always keep swimming. Even if I'm an old lady one day, I'm going to, I'm going (laughs) to swim up and down in the pool there. (laughs) But look, you're very far from being an old lady and you're very far (laughs) from stopping. I mean, as far as I can see, your journey is just beginning. And talking about your swimming journey and how it has started and what you've had to do, because obviously still in school, but trying to swim competitively and be an elite athlete and be dedicated. What are some of the sacrifices that you've had to make? I I believe that you split your matric year into two. Yeah. So that's a sacrifice I had to make. Um, It was a big decision last year to start homeschooling in my matric year I I don't think that's something you often do um because it's like your last year and you're not used to the homeschooling but um I just I wanted to give everything in school and in swimming like you can't you have to sacrifice the one for the other and I wasn't happy with not having good school grades because I also want to one day go study and have a good job after swimming so um I had to um, split my matric year. I think that was the best decision I've made um, thus far because I mean the results are showing and um, it's better having not so much pressure on myself and I can decide when I want to do my work and because um, some days during the day you actually get so busy with appointments and going to the physio and training that you you don't even get to your schoolwork and then at night at least I can do it where when you're in, in normal school you yeah. kind of you forced into a routine um so that was a very good decision for me but other sacrifices I've had to make like school dances um like I, I missed my grade 10 ball because I had a um African games gala in I think it was in Algeria so I miss that. And I mean, there's, there's a lot of sacrifices, but I would do, I would sacrifice everything every, like each time again, because I mean, um, I'm happy where I am at the moment. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's worth it. And it's worth it for you. You are doing what you're passionate about. You are doing mm-hmm. what you love, which is absolutely incredible. I think that is really inspirational. So we talk about the Olympics because the goal is, of course, 2024. Paris? Yeah, 2024, yes. So what would it take for you to qualify? So you've qualified now for the short course uh, championships, a second place in Australia. Yes. So what other events would you need to participate in and win and do well in in order to qualify for 2024? Okay, so to qualify, you they give you specific times that you have to swim. So you have to go that time or faster. Um, so the times are actually already out that we have to swim and I'm already far under the time. But coming in the Olympic year 2024, there will be a qualification gala, just like the one we did now, where you have to, at that competition, swim that certain time or faster. 
So it's going to be the 100 meters because they, the Olympic Games don't have the 50 meters, which is really sad because I love the 50. Um, yes, so <laughs> and it loves you. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. So um, we'll just have the 100 meter qualifying. Um, I'm not sure about the 200, but I don't think I'll do the 200. I th okay, yeah, because that is obviously – um, you would have to work on your endurance and breaststroke mm. is your bread and butter. That is your favorite stroke. Yes. That is the one that you specialize in. So there's, yeah. you're not thinking of deviating. No, into, no, no. I mean, you, you are young. I feel like you can deviate into anything and you can be brilliant at it. And also any length <laughs> and yeah. distance. No, I, I do enjoy swimming my other strokes. Like um, I always do different strokes here in South Africa, but for world stage, I'm not as good in the other strokes as I am in breaststroke. And like you said, I have to work on endurance if I want to do the 200. And I've got a very high tempo, high tempo stroke. So if I wanted to swim the 200, I kind of have to change my stroke completely, which actually does gives me a disadvantage because then mm. I lose my speed. So that's why we kind of never really do the 200. Um, just because of that, we don't want it to lose my raw speed I have trying to lengthen my stroke out to some 200 when I'm actually good at 50 and 100. Of course, you want to stick to your strengths. And yeah. what goes into a day of training for you? <laughs> like a regular, what's a normal day for Lara van Hikik? So I'll wake up at six o'clock in the morning and jump in the pool at seven and do a two hour swim session. So I'll get out at nine o'clock go home, have breakfast, then do whatever I need to, maybe if it's school or, or if I have an appointment. And then by the evening, after, you know, like late afternoon, I'll go back to training at like um, about four o'clock and we jump in the pool by five because we do dry land before we get in the, to the pool. So then I'll have um, a session from five to seven in the evening. So that's about training wise how it goes but at least that's only three times a day oh, three times a day three times a week sorry. <laughs> i'm like wow okay <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's three times a week the other two days of the week i do an hour gym in the morning instead of that swim session but then still the swim session in the afternoon so yeah it's three swim sessions in the morning um of a week yeah, is, so, is this in a heated pool uh, yes, luckily. luckily <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, okay, because I mean, it's the middle of winter and I'm sure that you do not take a break because there are swimming championships happening in different countries, different times of year. So you obviously need to keep up with that training yeah. and you can't just do dry land training. But of course, no, no, that no. is part of um, your strength and conditioning. What exactly is dry land training? So um, I'll do two sessions a week in the gym which is proper weights and everything okay but the dry land we do before we get into the pool will be like the extra core strengthening work um i do shoulder prehab um so that i don't hurt the shoulder um and i'll do things like that we do sometimes we do reaction drills just to practice that reaction for um the start in a competition so it depends on the day or what i feel like doing <laughs> um and yeah, so now after this, I can start doing explosive stuff again. So I'll start doing maybe some ex explosive jumps before I get into the pool to work on my dives because that will obviously complement the the speed I get from the blocks. So that's that's about it. You say that's about it, but that's a lot of draining. That is a lot to to take in and for one person to be doing. But of course. When you're going to be the best and you will one day be an Olympic gold medalist, I I foresee it. Mark my words. In fact, <laughs> you. you know, I'm gonna take this podcast and I'm gonna repost it around the Paris 2024 time and I'll be like, I predicted it right yeah. here. I was the one that said it. <laughs> that yeah. it's happening. So I'm assuming that that's that that will be your focus. So you will be finishing your matric now. Yeah. And then that will be your focus. Because, I mean, this is the time in uh, any young person's life where you're making big decisions. So will you take a few years to focus on the swimming before um, going into studying? Or are you thinking of kind of doing a balancing act and studying through correspondence or going to university and training simultaneously? 
So I'm actually already um, signed up for studying next year at the oh. University of Victoria. Yeah, so I've been accepted and everything. So oh, congratulations. Um, thank That's you. amazing. <laughs> thank you. It's just um, I want to keep keep myself busy and not just do swimming. So I might I might take an extended plan on my studies, like maybe drop like do a few subjects later on, but if I'm, I'm going to get a degree. I'm going to be busy doing it because you need to have a backup plan. I've always believed in that. And my dad has taught me that from being small. If You never know with a, a sport. Like you can maybe, hopefully not, but get an injury and you can never swim again. Um, so you have to yeah. kind of have that like backup plan. So I'm definitely going to start studying next year and um, hopefully get my degree in about four to five years just because I'm going to take it over an extended time. Of course. I mean, you have it all planned out. And you speak about backup plans, and obviously that's about making a living and making sure that you will be comfortable, whether it's after swimming, whether it's because of injury, although we do not wish that at all. But how does one make money purely as a swimmer, doing swimming as a career? Do you get money from any institutions or... Is it solely based on sponsorship? So um, at the moment, it's just sponsorship for me. But I actually don't have a lot of sponsorships at the moment. But I do have an agent that's working on it now um, to get my... Because I don't get um, like monthly money or anything. It's just on based on winnings. So as soon as I go to like the world champs and I, I want a medal, I get money for that winning from the federation like um not swimming no not some swimming say eh? they, they don't do a lot of a lot for us um it's like fina the world swimming um uh. would fund a competition like that and when you win a medal they would give you a prize mini prize money with it um but for now that's about it and it's actually a very big problem in south africa is that we don't get any support from the government um and if we do get support it's not enough um so i think that's just why we don't see a lot of very big athletes that come up from a small age and go all the way because at a stage you 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 reach the limit um i've just been so fortunate having a supportive family and um, my parents could have supported me financially with all the tours i needed needed to do and all the gear i need because it gets really expensive if you look at all the overseas trips and everything that we actually have to do to um, get some experience. So I think hopefully one day someone will realize and put some funding into swimming because I also think swimming is the sport that gets the least recognition in that in the funding uh, side of the um, world. But yeah, so I hope one day they can make a plan with us. <laughs> I mean, that's a true little funding for swimming, but swimming is... The, the sport that brings us that glory, those medals. I mean, we've had amazing swimmers over the years. Who are some of your biggest inspirations in the swimming world or even not in the swimming world? Maybe it's in another sport. Somebody that you really look to as a role model. Um, if I can choose someone that's not in South Africa, it would definitely be <laughs> Adam Beatty. Um, just because he is also a breaststroker and he's the 50 and the 100 meter world record holder. And he's got a quite similar stroke to mine. Um, like we've got a very high tempo stroke. So I've always, since a little girl, um, loved him. And I actually met him at the Commonwealth Games. And I was like, oh, wow, a super fangirl moment. Um, <laughs> I took a picture with him because it's the night we both won gold. He won the gold in the 50 and I won the gold in the 100. Um, it was, yeah, and he actually noticed me and he knew who I was. So I think that was, that was like the highlight of the whole Commonwealth Games is meeting my role <laughs> model <laughs> and taking a picture with him. So, yeah, but I think definitely um, Tachana has been a very big inspiration to us and a lot of young swimmers, um, definitely kind of breaking the ice for the female swimmers because we... Um, after Penny, we didn't really have a lot of female swimmers coming through. So I think she really kind of break the ice because now we've got myself, we've got Erin Gallinger, we've got Rebecca Meader, Kayleen Corbett. I think there's a lot of young females coming up. So I'm very excited for what's that, what, what's going to happen next for us. 
Look, more and more people are going to be recognizing and knowing who you are. I think you're going to have to get used to that. You are no longer somebody who nobody will recognize. Everybody no. will know exactly who you are. And I just no. want to go back to the funding and the sponsorship. Do you have a hand in putting together proposals for sponsorship? Do I? Sorry, what you? But sorry, can you just repeat that one? Do you have a hand in, or or do you help with putting together proposals for sponsorship? Um. Yes. Yeah, sometimes I can go to my agents and say listen, I really like this product. Can we try to get a sponsor in that? So actually the other day I sent him uh, a re- like a example of a sponsor because um, there's a skin product that I really like. And I was like, maybe we, we should try this um, because it is a South African brand. Um, so supporting some small local businesses, it's just, um, so I really hope that could come through one day, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I can sometimes say w- what, brands I like and then he'll try um negotiate for me but you don't always get what you want so of course and and if you could share a message with a young child or you know a a young adult who is doing a sport that is not getting the funding from government it isn't one of the big sports that is getting a lot of attention but they want to continue and they want to pursue it what, what is that message that, that you would give them? Would you tell them, listen, always have a backup plan? Or would you give them an, a different message, like always push forward? <laughs> I would say definitely, number one, always have a backup plan. Um, there's a lot of people that don't go study and just focus on swimming. But like I said, swimming kind of have a expiry date or you can get an injury or anything. So, but the other thing is I would say um, – it's going to be hard to get in. It's going to be really expensive to get you to that level. But as soon as you get to that level, it's going to start paying back because you're going to start winning. You're going to get sponsors. You're going to get the support, hopefully from the government by that time. So I think just keep going. It's just put your head down, go and just don't give up. I mean, I think some of us just give up too easily. It's, and maybe if you just push like a, two more months, you would have had the success of your life. So I think just that never give up, like just push forward. Look, Lara, you are such an inspiration to so many young girls, but also so many young people. And that is so beautiful. And also achieving all of this in the month of August, it it just sends a powerful message to the country and to the world, you know, that young women they can be determined, they can achieve their goals, and you are doing that. And I just want to touch on what, so what is next, the very next thing that that you'll be involved in? Is it the Australian Short Course uh, Championship? Yes, it's that. So um, as soon as the foot heals up and I'm out of the cast, I'm going to start um, getting slowly back into the pool and get stronger. And then I've got about... Uh, two hard months of training, I think. So it's going to be tight. It's got not a lot of time. Um, but then I really want to go to Australia for the World Short Course Champs, especially because um, we got banned with the travel bans last year to go to Abu Dhabi when they had the World Short Course Champs. And I think that's where I would have made my international appearance because I trained so hard for that competition. Um, but then it got... Um, we, we got banned. So um, I think if I go this year, it will really be exciting to um, compete in my first ever world short course champs because I've been to the world long course champs. So, yeah, I'm just I really hope that everything can work out and I can go there. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. No, me too, because we want to be watching you. What are the dates of this uh, championship? <laughs> it's the 13th of December to the 20th. 2nd I think or the 21st about there okay so while the rest so while the rest of us are having a liquor festive season (laughs) you are going to be working hard and training hard and competing and of course winning breaking more records I don't even know how you do it I I mean (laughs) do how do how do you do you know how you're doing it do you expect okay look I I went to the speed I can go faster (laughs) yes so I think it's just as soon as I break a record, I'm like, 
what can I fix to break it again? Because it's like, <laughs> I want to see how many times I can break it. Like that, the Commonwealth Games, as soon as I broke the record in the 50 of the heats, I kind of set myself a mini goal and said I want to break it um, the se- at the semifinals and at the finals. So I ended up breaking the game record three times. I think it's exactly. just... Exactly. Breaking just your own record. Be yeah. I just want to keep getting better. Um, I always say you can always be better than your last swim. You always have to try to be better than your last swim. So I think that motivates me just to break those records. Look, that's so special. You are motivating yourself and you are motivating others. (laughs) And uh, just a quick word, because your coach has been on this journey with you from the very beginning. And what are some of the things that that he said to you? Does he expect as much from you as you clearly expect from yourself? Um, I think I put more pressure on myself and I, I expect more from myself. Um, just like an example, I had my appendix removed of, in April and then we went on to the Mare Nostrum. So um, just having that, I was expecting to swim the way, like new times and new records and everything. And um, he just knew that your body took a knock. Like it's not going to just suddenly – swim p you're not going to swim pvs because you just had an organ removed um (laughs) i do i do put a lot of pressure on myself and i do sometimes expect too much with times when i need to just say um listen i've been through this let me just take a step back it's fine um but luckily he always puts me back into the lane if as soon as i get off the road but he puts me back on it and he just reminds me that i mean you don't have to go breaking records after having surgery or something. It's just um, getting back into the routine and getting there again, training hard. And, and I mean, one day, like Commonwealth Games, it showed it's everything just got back together. Look, that sounds like great advice. And I mean, you just you are recovering now from surgery. So please take it easy. Do oh, well. get your rest and be kind oh, well. to yourself. Oh, be kind yeah. to yourself. Definitely. Um, I will. And and one more thing, when you do find yourself maybe not achieving what you expect of yourself, because obviously you have high expectations, mm-hmm. is there something special that you do or is it the support of your family and your coach that, that gets you through that? Um, definitely the support from my family and my coach. Um, like I said, I've got the most amazing support structure, even if it's just like, I have having I'm having a really hard week of training and I'm struggling to go to that Saturday morning training. My sister will always re- motivate me and say, oh, come on, just one more session of the week and then you've got Sunday off. Um, so as soon as I don't really achieve what I want to or if I start getting lazy in a way of not wanting to train hard anymore, I've got people that remind me why I'm doing this and the goal in the future, you need just need to keep that big goal in mind and I mean if you keep that goal in mind and you don't want to get up in the morning and you remind yourself why you're doing it you're going to get up so quickly because you want that um, achievement one day so I think that's very important to remind yourself why are you doing this and with that I am going to say thank you so much for having this conversation with me I wish you all the best for the future more personal bests, more records. I want world records. I'm I'm asking a lot now, but that is because, <laughs> you know, I believe in you. And I think that you have a whole country, a whole country behind you who thank has started you. to believe in you as well. Yeah, thank you. I've, I really think the whole country is um, behind me. And it's very nice seeing that everyone gets together and cheers, even though they might not even know swimming, they still watched it on the Commonwealth Games and it's just amazing knowing that there's a lot of people out there. So thank you so much. And thank you for having me on the show. It's amazing. It is an absolute pleasure and an honor. And we'll talk again. Paris 2024. I would love to see that gold medal. I would like to I would like you to come and visit Cape Town as well. And <laughs> yeah. we can we can celebrate together. <laughs> yes, I, that sounds like a date. <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you enjoy the conversation, comment below and keep following on the socials.